if we're all ready, I need to, uh, first thing I want you guys to do is you figure out how to move. So the way you move around or rotate around the viewport, which is this area right here, is you click the middle mouse wheel. Click it and drag your mouse. You'll see you'll be able to move or rotate around the object you are focusing on. All right, so do we, know, do we know how to move around the viewport now? Middle click, move around the viewport. All right, to zoom in, you scroll. You scroll on the mouse. You can zoom in and out. We figured out the basic movements of use middle mouse button to rotate and then use the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. It would be lovely if I got confirmation. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now you guys can do that. The way you move things around is by pressing, or if you want to manipulate an object's location, press G. Let's see, so you can you know, move it around. Pressing G moves around any object, and if you want to move it around to not through the shortcut, you can press this gizmo right here for moving. You can click and move it how you like. It'll move it on the axes, like I can move it on the X, I can move it on the Y, I can move it on the, move it on the Z. If you want to move, uh, make diagonal movement, you can click one of these, move it on that plane. All right. And to reset an object's position back to the origin, what you want to do is you want to press Alt and you want to press G. We have that down? Two things. So something important to know when using Blender is that every object has an origin. That's this orange dot right here. That's the origin of the object. When you rotate something, it rotates around the origin. And everything, like scaling-wise, like if I want to scale the object, it'll scale off the origin. But if you go into edit mode by pressing tab, which allows you to manipulate vertices on the object, when you move it, the origin does not come with it. So when now when you rotate, it still rotates around the origin, but the origin is no longer inside the object. So if I reset its location now, the origin goes back, but the object is still offset. What you're going to want to do if you have the origin not connected to the geometry is you're going to want to right click, go set origin, and press origin to geometry. So now the origin goes back to the center of mass of the object you are working with. And then when I press Alt G, it returns it back. We have that down? Great. Okay, so let's start working on making the chair. The first thing I want all of you guys to do, because like now you, you understand like the basics of movement, I want you to press A. And you can see, like, even if you can hear what I'm saying, like when I when I say press A, you see up there it shows like I'm pressing the A button. I have those little screencast keys on the bottom left for you guys to make it easier to understand what I'm doing. So press A and press X. It will give you the option to delete selected objects. Press delete. Move all of the objects. And once you get that down, I want you to press Shift A. Go to Mesh. In, uh, in the Mesh menu, I want you to click Cube. I do not want to see what's free this week, though. So sorry. Where did you go to open that? Okay, so what you want to do to open the menu is press Shift A, and then in the Mesh menu, go down and click Q. You got that? All right. So the first thing we want to do is we want to figure out. We're going to try and model the bottom part of the or the mid part of the chair, the place where you sit. We're going to start on that first, then move down to the legs and move up to the uh, backrest and armrests. So I want you guys, I want everyone to press tab to go into edit mode. Then scale, then we're gonna, I'm going to teach you how to scale here. Pressing S will give you the ability to scale an object. So I want you to press S and then Z. Z will allow you to scale on the Z axis. Pressing SX will allow you to scale, scale on the X, SY, scale on the Y. But for this, we want, to, we want to flatten the object to make it more of a cushion. So scale it on the Z axis. All right? We got that down. Have we scaled it down on the Z? All right. 
Next thing we, uh, we're going to want to do is this, we're going to make this the cushion. But we also need the bottom part of the chair, the plastic part. So what we're going to do, I'm going to show you guys how to duplicate here. Press Shift and D. And now you have the same object but duplicated. Shift D. And bring that onto the object. And I want you to scale it. By pressing S to scale, you can scale up the object. Got that down? We have all of this on our screens. Are you sure? What happened? So for cursor, the way this works is yeah, whenever you click, it sets the world or not the world origin. It sets the cursor to here. The cursor is where your objects go when you create them. Uh, so if you want your objects to go back to the world origin, what you're gonna want to do is press Shift and S. Then you want to do cursor to world origin. Do you see that? Um, there it is. Yeah. Now the cursor is back at the center of the world. Now when I do create a cube, it's back. And we're fine. The next thing we're going to want to do is this, the origin, currently, let me get this back to the world. The cushion right here is very much just like a block. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to, we're going to want to smooth out the edges, right? And there's multiple ways we can do this. Let me show you the way I was going to go about it. I'm going to press I, and I will bring in a second set of faces. Press I here. Now the outer edges and the inner edges are separated. Now you can manipulate the outer edges and the inside stays the same. So let's say we want to bring this down. By pressing, uh, the way you can the, what, the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to press G twice. This will allow you to slide an edge. I'm gonna... No, it's, it's just <laughs> looking really derpy. So it, it's going to look a bit silly. I, I, I'm, I'm not specialized in making chairs. But you, you bring it down. Now you have a sort of slant here. We're going to press G and Z. We're going to take the top face, press G and Z. And then you're going to bring it down. We have something more rounded. And what we're going to do now is we're going to take the bottom face here, if you guys are following. We're going to take the bottom face here. What's going on? <laughs> Nothing. It's, it's perfect. It's perfect. Got it. I think maybe you should explain the different like selection moves, like vertex select, edge select, and that also how sense. to select a... Um... Got it. Okay, so I did, I did neglect to inform you guys of that. Let me bring this out and show you guys how selections work. So the different modes you can select and are on the top left here, if you can take a look up here real quick. These are the different modes you can select. Vertex select will allow you to select points on the 3D object. You can move these around however you like. And edge select will allow you to collect, uh, click the edge between two points. Like this edge right here, I can select it and manipulate it. And the way you change that is, on, uh, as I showed previously, on the top left, clicking on the top left, you can change between the modes. So I can click edge, or I can click vertex, edge, or face. If you want an easier way to swap between these modes, you can click one, two, and three. One is vertex. One will give me vertex select. Two will give me edge select. And three will give me face select. Do we understand how the selections work now? And if you want to select a loop of edges, like let's say these, these four loops on the top, the way you select all these loops, uh, the way you select all these edges at once, you would click Alt, you would do, uh, hold down Alt and press click. Or, I should probably explain what a loop cut is now. <laughs> so the way you uh, would, let's say you want to make a, a set of, of vertices here in the middle, what you're going to want to do is press Control and R. This will summon a set of faces here in the middle. They can manipulate as you wish, giving your object more vertices, allowing you to change it more. Because let's say I want to scale this up, but I want to scale this down kind of thing. That would be used that is possible by the edge select here where you want the center to be larger than the top and bottom. 
because we're moving this, making you know just flat. And the way you can and the way you can create an edge, as I said, is contr uh, Control R. Control R will bring an edge in. Um, and once you have an edge in, let's say you want to select all the edges at once. What you're going to want to do is hold down Alt and click. Now you've selected all the edges. Going back to the mesh we currently have, how many of us, I'm going to help you guys here, how many of us are at this image? Now that we're at this point, let me give you guys something to view the 3D viewport better. This is a preference of mine. I want you all to press, uh, the t you see this top right button here? I want you to click it. See what I'm clicking on? It's the drop down arrow at, uh, between these three balls. Click it, and I want you to click cavity. Clicking cavity will bring out the edges of the model more, so you can see what you're working with better. It just makes it, it, just makes it easier on the eyes. You can fiddle with it how you like. You can increase the ridge, you can increase the valley, make it really prominent. I find very useful. You don't have to do that as personal preference to see the model better. But, um, okay, so now that we're here, what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna try and make the back part of the model, the back part of the chair. So we're gonna want to click on the bottom square that we've created, click on it, all of you, then press tab. This brings you back into edit mode. And in edit mode, as I said previously, you can adjust the vertices as you like, and by pressing one, Two or three, you can change your selection mode. Or one's vert vertex mode, two's edge mode, and three is face mode. Now that we're at this point, I want you all to press Control R. This will create a loop in your model, and this loop will allow you to move up and down as you like, placing it where you want. But pressing Control R. And you want to hover your mouse, like, let me show you. It's a bit fiddly, because it depends on where your mouse is. Like, if my, mouse, if my mouse is too far away from the model, it doesn't respond at all when I press Control R. You have to be near it, and you have to click to accept it. Okay, so what we're gonna try and do now is we're gonna, we're gonna bring out this face to make it the back plate of the chair. I'm gonna press E, Okay, follow me here. E. Press E to extrude. And then you move your mouse. That brings out this face here. Follow it? Sure. Now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to do another loop cut like we did previously, but here. I want to put it in the center of this back plate. All right, now you want to go into face select if you're not already in it by pressing three. Then with this face selected, I want you to press I. This is what we did with the model initially with the cube. And we, I want you to press I and hold down shift. Shift lets you make slight adjustments. So it's, it's not like too hard or too fast. But like if I do it like this, like I'm not holding down shift. You go very you go very fast on small models like this one. And why shift is an important way to make slight adjustments it makes it easier on you. You get it? And shift works for anything. Like let's say I want to scale this up. Holding down scale normally scales it up like pretty pretty fast. But I press S and shift, it goes a lot slower. So shift is good for any slight adjustments you want to make. Okay, now that we're at this point, what you're going to want to do is, as we did previously where we brought this face out, this one right here, we're going to bring this face out by pressing E again. Click it and press E and drag your mouse up. I've made a toilet. Oh, How many of you have gotten to this point right here where we've made the back plate? All right. So what you're going to want to do now is you can see these chairs here have these little holes in the middle. We're going to try and do something similar where we have like three, three holes down the middle of, 
of the back plate. What we're going to do is we're going to press, we're going to do a loop cut, but this time, we're going to, after you get it to this point, scroll on your mouse. And this should give you more loop cuts. Y'all see that? Doing control R and having it doing a horizontal cut, scroll. And if you don't want to scroll, if you just want it to do the horizontal cut, then you can press, then like you want to decide how many loops it does, press like five. That'll give you five loop cuts, which is easier for you guys. So like six gives you, I, I did 56, but you know, it's like I can do like six, I could do nine, I could do two. So by pressing control R, near the mesh when it's highlighted, press a button. For us, we're going to do six. All right? You want to see me do that again? Do the loop cut, have it going horizontal, and press six. Then click. We good? All right, so if we've selected all these faces, pressing shift click allows you to select multiple faces for anyone who's unaware. I want you to press X for me, pressing X brings up the delete menu. Now what you delete will change what happens here. Like if I delete vertices, it deletes every, uh, it deletes all of this, the entire, the entire set of faces here. If we delete edges, it deletes everything, but it, it retains the, ex like the edges that we're connecting to it. And if you delete faces, it only deletes the faces here. So you want, you want to delete the faces, and what you're going to want to do, you want to press Alt-Click like how I showed you guys initially, Alt-click to let you select an edge loop. You have to be in the edge select mode, so make sure you press 2 before you do Alt-click. Press 2, Alt-click. Now you want to do Shift, Alt-click. Select the edges back here. Now we've selected these two edge loops. By pressing Alt-click, you can select the edge loops. You want to be in edge select mode, or else you can't select an edge loop. Good? So what we're going to want to do is, Blender is new now. Uh, I'm going to show you guys a different one. So pressing F3 brings you the search function. Because I don't know where they put it in this version. So by pressing... What? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, so, sure so, that's why. so by pressing F3, you can bring up the search function and do, like, you can search up anything. Like, if I want to do extrude edge, it gives me that. So we're gonna want, what we're going to want to do is search up bridge. Pressing F3 and search up bridge will give you bridge edge loops. Press that, and now you've bridged the edge loops in the inside. You see? Ouch. By pressing, by selecting these edge loops and pressing F3, searching up bridge, you can bring up bridge edge loops. By pressing enter, it bridges the, the edge loops on the inside. Now what you're going, to, you're going to want to do is you want to do the same thing for the next two sets. So by pressing F3, bridge edge loops. Bridge edge loops. Now you've bridged the edge loops and have made the interior faces. You know, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to create legs. So we're going to want to edit the bottom of this mesh. Not the best way to do it. I want you to select this face and press subdivide. I want you to go to the bottom, I want you to press tab, go to the bottom here, the bottom face, click it, right click, and press the first option to subdivide it. Now I want you, while all of these are still selected, to right click and do it again. What I'm doing normal? No. Is what I'm doing optimal? Also no. Is this the only thing I can think of at this very second? Yes. We have four minutes. We just screwed the four corners. What do you think I'm doing? <laughs> it's fucking dumb. Okay, I think the, a better way to do it though, by clicking the four corners, Pressing inset or pressing I, 
that I showed you guys before, for those of you did two more times previously. Click the four corners, press I, and press E, Z to extrude down. And we made a chair. Is it a good chair? That's very debatable. It's a sittable chair, maybe. That's very arguable. Another thing we can do is, so like while we have all this set up as is, let me think of a way to add detail. What have they done to the menu? Like, didn't it? Are you on Blender 4 right now? You are, okay. I'm, a, I'm, a I just I'm just typing it in. Man. I'm, it's I'm very keyword-based now. I'm a 3.6 guy. Yeah, I, I haven't used 4 that much. All right, so I'm just, I'm just checking things now because I don't know how this version of Blender works. Honestly, I like it better. It's, I feel like for me, typing is so much easier than trying to find like bevels or something. I've muscle memoried it. Like, I go so fast, much faster than typing. Okay, so what you're gonna want to do is first the cushion could should connect to the back of the chair. So I'm gonna show you how to change your viewport. Press Z and go. Pressing Z will allow you to change your viewport. So I want you to go to edit mode on the cushion. Press Tab on the cushion. Now that you're in edit mode, pressing Z will bring up this view here. You can go to render view, material view, or wireframe view. We don't have any materials. We have nothing to really render. We're gonna to go to wireframe. And now you can see the wireframe of the mesh. And what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to want to off select the last couple of uh, vertices here. Make sure you click one to be in vertices, to click the vertices. What happened to you? Did Blender crash? That makes sense, it does that. Welcome to the Blender experience. What did you press to make it crash? <laughs> did it, Instantaneous crashing, that makes sense. Okay, so for those of you who lived, I would like you to, to take these back couple of vertices that you've selected by clicking Z. Clicking Z will allow you to go to this mode. Click Z, press G, press X, and drag it back. Do you follow? You, you want to go to wireframe view, select these, press G, press X, and move it back. Might be a good idea, but like, we, we teach them how to save their projects. Good point! <laughs> it didn't crash. It just stopped running for a while. Let's go! <laughs> okay, good. You've taught, you've reminded me to tell you how to save your project. Press Control S. <laughs> and let's save this to the desktop. Call this. Fun titled Blend. I was going to call it Chair One, but you know, Creative Freedom. I normally just call it Trash. Well, I call it peak. That's why. That's why I'm. That's why I've been in it longer. <laughs> I don't even know if I've been in it longer. But pressing Control S gives you the option to save. Not the option. You. It's not an option. You probably should save. So pressing Control S lets you save. See here how many times you press Control S. It shows you on the bottom save. Now that, we've, now that we've saved it, if we want to do something a bit extra, uh, we can go to Add Modifier here. Awesome. For, for future reference, you can go to Add Modifier here, go to Search, and type in like Bevel. That gives it a bevel. So like you see the corners here. You can like increase the segment amount, make it harsher, or softer. And most like most objects don't have sharp edges, so for realism, you're gonna always want to like have some sort of like bevel for like a lot of your edges. Like this doesn't have a hard edge right here; it has bevels, it has soft edges, so you don't cut yourself. We can do the same thing here. We can go bevel. And you can see how it works here. And another thing we can do is we can press Control One, which hopefully won't crash your computers. You can add subdivision. It almost I think it almost crashed my computer. Subdivisions just add geometry to a mesh. So if we remove the bevel here, I think quality oh, is crazy. Ooh. Ooh. I looked down and looked back up. It like it's become like an eldritch chair. I don't know what <laughs> happened. This is what happens when you don't make it all quads. Uh, so 
a, a way Spike's to chair should be rooted in the earth. A way to reduce the effect of a subdivision surface modifier is by pressing tab while everything is selected. Press shift E. And this will crease the edges and give you something like an, a slightly less algebra coil. I would not show this to my mother. <laughs> So what did you guys learn today? What would you learn today, class? How to download how Blender on Steam? How did you Blender? How do you how to do Blender? How to make the chair in Blender? How to make the chair in Blender. I made something.